Hello and welcome to the next episode of my Sound Design Here Create series. This is Project 4, Pines Fog, Episode 6, React. So let's recap what we've done so far. So far, I have been going through my sound design process end to end and I've released the final audio. But unlike most of the other Sound Design Here Create episodes, this is a collaboration, in this case with YouTuber Odo Zendaidokai. Um, as referenced by the two artists, one prompt. Sticker. So what I'm doing today then is I'm going to be watching his entire process, starting with the final audio, and I'm going to be offering my commentary on that, trying to contrast where we did things differently, find areas in which we followed a similar process, and hopefully learn something along the way. So I guess we should get started. So this is the final audio. I will try not to talk too much, but I'll offer any key comments that I think I have. So I like the combination of relatively low key and quiet foley and subtle noises with um, pads and other sort of swelling melodic elements. I like that swelling bass sound as well. So overall, I would say I found that quite interesting. I think the approach is slightly different, whereas I've gone a little bit more music forwards. They've gone a little bit more sound effect and um, kind of cinematic foley forwards. So that is a contrast here, but I'll be interested now in watching the process. So I believe this first episode is more an explanatory episode, and then we're really going to move into the sound design. So this is the prompt, that's a lot of trees, pines. So this prompt um, is from a copyright free video. I modified it slightly, I deliberately made it a little bit more lo-fi, uh, low fidelity that is, and made it a little bit slower. The version that I shared has no audio. I will also have shared this on my community tab for anybody interested in following along. I just play it right now. Turning a little bit. So I think this is an interesting difference. In my approach, in the I went for something which was more of a musical piece rather than something that contains more uh, sound effects, though I did include sound effects. And I simply took approximate... Um, through the camera or... Um, I approximated the elements in the scene with sounds that I made, and I didn't go for any sort of tight element. time synchronization. So from what is being said, I think they're going to go for something a little bit more synchronized in time, which will be interesting. Um... Great. 
grayish green. So I definitely looked to the video for hints, but I think I was a little bit more abstract in my interpretation. I didn't really think about the change in color of the foliage on the ground, so that's an interesting thought that I didn't really uh, use. I'm thinking about footsteps, but I'm not really sure if I want that, because the cam is like flying through the scene. And I, I need so in my case, I actually did include footsteps of this. Quality. <laughs> If there's a real I think it's interesting here to see that they made very similar observations okay, to me, this, but they, they took those observations in finer detail and they um, took the interpretation of those more directly into the audio. Whereas I think what so I did was I tried to take the feel of those elements and go for something, as I said, more abstract. This really stands in strong contrast to my last project, Machine's Life, where I did a very, very literal and tightly synchronized interpretation of what was going on in the video. Pines in, pines in fog. So I think it's interesting that they said they're going to be going for a all synthesized sound approach. I went for a sort of mixed approach where some of what I did was synthesis and some of what I did was sample based and I tried to mix a little hardware and a little software. In particular I used pigments mostly because um, I only just got pigments, I'd had it used it for a couple of hours so I'm a little inexperienced when I'm using it in, in my video. It's nice to see, I think, Surge XT. It's free, and I think it's a, a very good synth. And for people who use Linux, which both of us do, I think it's an excellent option to give you some uh, sound design options. Let's see how the process proceeds. Hello and a very warm welcome. One of the things I do sometimes when trying to do uh, sound design for things like this is I, I try and keep in my box, mind as open, open as I can and imagine what I would hear. Sometimes it almost feels like you can hear sounds that are not yet present. So then that's I a method that I use, quick. especially when I have context. While watching, I will write it down in blocks of the sound element and note lists with time and descriptions of the sound that I want to create. So, so these project notes and metadata are something I don't really use very often, and I think they could be very useful in a project like that. So that's definitely something that I'm going to take away. It's interesting to hear the, the questioning that the they end, have with respect to the scene, which right definitely down. went much deeper with what I did. Seems like... Blades of grass passing by very close to the camera. Nice. I think some of these subtle elements, like the blade of grass moving or trees moving past, it may have been nice to, at least in my piece, utilize some of that. I think it would have brought us a slightly tighter combination between video and audio, whereas I think in my case, they're relatively disconnected. They are stylistically and aesthetically connected, but they're not literally or time-wise connected. So I'll be interested to hear how that time synchronization is manifested.
I noted down some elements that I put over here in the track listing. So I find well. it interesting to see and that this process is like being done directly wind, in Bitwig. Inputs, Typically, so I would do this in a separate document, wind, then um, and I think this is a much more efficient workflow, so this workflow is probably something that I'll take on board. Come right, and I put in here a pitch shifter. So this is a, an interesting approach. I did consider I some uh, pitch idea. modulation, but because I went for something so, quite melodic um, and tonal, yeah, I didn't use it. But this approach of grouping them gives and us I some mix down bus, which we can put effects on. So it's a, it's a nice idea versus putting it on the master. The seconds pink noise to whiter noise, for example. Create some wind chimes and then use... I like the concept of the transition dull, of the darker, noise color. I use that to some extent, um, but more than that, I tend to just well to use filtering, so this will be interesting. To raise the frequency. And the camera height with so I have enjoyed the combination of um, technical analysis of the situation um, in, of a sort of emotive phrasing, understanding of the scene of and some level of abstraction and artistic and interpretation to see those all nonsense. come together into something so coherent is, is quite compelling to me reverb on it or so. So I have experimented with Surge in the past, and I am a fan of a lot of free and open source software, but um, as I mentioned, I just acquired Pigment, so I was too tempted to use that. But Surge is definitely something that I'd like to dig into a little more. The noise color. I often find myself surprised with how much subtlety you can bring just by coloring noise, filtering noise, animating those parameters and adding uh, some light effects on it. You can get anything from rain to crunchy leaves to wind blowing to waves crashing. Interesting that the attack, it was not 100%. Oh, they actually hardened up the attack there. I was thinking the attack sounded a little bit soft for a wind chime and they, they adjusted it. So, so far, these elements actually sound surprisingly similar to what I did. Um, the plucky sound I did on a piece of hardware, but other than that, surprisingly, surprisingly similar. Sound, the volume of the fog. The workflow that they followed here with the notes and having the video in a small window always on top, I think that's a very nice workflow. When I wanted to work with um, video, I fell back to using Reaper for that aspect because Reaper has better tooling for tight um, synchronization with video, but I think this works surprisingly well. So when listening to the completed audio, I think I noticed this, this sort of bass swell. So I'll be interested to see how they implemented that. When I saw it, I was imagining it might pan, but then when I thought about it, it's really in the sub bass. So that tends to be much less directional. So I don't think it suffers for that. It was very loud. And that's one of the tricky parts yes. of sine waves. They're a very, very clean sound, so you have to find a way of adding a little color to them and hinting at upper harmonics. Let's try unison voices. 
Okay, so now I can hear a touch of distortion appearing. That was getting down very, very low to the point where you could hear the push and pull of the, the sound waves. Good. Ah, that is something I almost never remember to do. Um, you can type in the length of a note. Typically what I do is I just make a short clip with a short note, and then I just stretch the clip out. So that's something I'll definitely take away, remembering that I can type in the note length if I want to. Interesting to hear that on those transitions with the sample and hold, sometimes you hear something which sounds like a a pitched sound as a sort of glitch, which is which is interesting. Maybe two LFOs. This is the sample and hold. And so. I've been thinking for some time that I should experiment a little more with more carefully shaped cyclic and non-cyclic modulation sources that such as in the right sequences. So this looks like it's a way of, of sequencing the modulation out to have a repetitive rhythmic pattern, which seems quite compelling. It's definitely something I'd like to explore more, if not in Surge, in one of my other uh, synthesis platforms. Noises around. I think that's okay. It could be rain, it could be the wood a little bit. I'm not really sure. But um, I think that sounds nice. I think okay, that, that thought is something that I've blades, followed a lot too, bushes. which is okay. sometimes zero when you're making sound effects seven, and kind of foley, zero. you imagine that it's going to represent a certain element, but you feel that it's still evocative yeah. of the scene, even if it doesn't sound like exactly what you want. So, for One, example, two, even though there is no rain, three, four, the scene makes you think rain, moisture, so those wet, dripping sounds may be appropriate, even when you were thinking, oh, I want something no grassy. Noises. So that bad pass noise, it, it reminds me of sound of a, a distant city maybe so that's interesting because you could imagine that this forest is in the country but there are some towns or cities around it which leak some amount of noise to it so hinting at those seems like a an interesting thing to do use that as well but uh, with a different timbre so that is a, a good observation which is that. sometimes when you're making sounds you would like a family yeah. of related this sounds and it's tempting to design each one of them independently but i think the concept of reusing a sound and making some adjustments to it can be good for making a family of sounds which feel like they belong in the same scene so this is something i'm definitely on board with still too quick i think i 
think of the moment the rising and falling of the noise makes me think a little bit of water um, like uh, ocean waves, for example. So we'll see how, how those get adjusted in time. But another nice use of entering numeric values when trying to get these things synchronized. Okay. So I think this does reflect a lot of the type of thinking that I followed, but I used sampled sounds rather than synthesized sounds, and I tended to transform them more into something a little more pitched or a little more harmonious and a little more musical. So I am interested to see what gets added, what gets changed, and how this translates into the slightly more melodic end result that we heard. So... So an interesting approach here, they placed a tool on the track rather than adjusting the individual gains, master gains, or track gains. This tool can be automated independent of the master fader. So what that means is you can use the master fader, and if you need automation, you can place automation. Too loud, far, far, far too loud. Maybe I really like that here. sort of... Um, Freaking rattling sound that they have going through there. It's very um, evocative of trees bending. It's also very eerie, which I think reflects the, the scene. So I think this illustrates an interesting point, which is it can be tempting when doing a project like this to think sound design is over, now I'm in mix, mix is over, now I'm mastering, mastering is over, now I'm producing the final video. But it's useful to remain open to the possibility of tweaking sound design. I know some people like to move to audio to avoid um, endless fine tuning, but I feel like as long as you can remain disciplined, this yeah. can be a great way of refining your sound. Another thing that's interesting is often when listening to these sounds soloed, the timbre is very different. You can often find that it sounds a little too thin or it doesn't sound as interesting as you thought. But once you listen to it in the context of the mix, you realize the function that it fulfills and that sometimes it should be turned off entirely. Sometimes it should be cranked up in intensity. So where possible, listening in context really helps you out with sound design, with mix, um, and to some extent even with tracking. Ah, so the compressor, they've set the threshold extremely low. Quite a soft attack, which is a little unusual for something to use as a sort of master compressor.
I like watching it through at this stage because I can really feel how the sound design work has gone to support the imagery that we have here. Sometimes when you're um, doing this type of thing, they can remain disconnected throughout. So watching it then, that really would um, reinforce to me that I was moving in the right direction. If it's at a loudness level, that is... So I appreciate the heavy use of textural material here. They give you an interesting ambience, which I think can be lacking sometimes. And I like the use of the pitched elements to hint at motion in the scene. So they're not just unmotivated or randomized sounds. They actually have some purpose, which I think adds to the atmosphere. So I think one downside of turning the loudness mm. down like this is I think the dynamics one. have been lost a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how they managed to, because I think in the final piece this worked, uh, how they managed to balance this, 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 the loudness versus the dynamics in the scene. So interestingly, um, since they have a group in place, they've used a reverb insert. In the process I was following, since I didn't have a group bus, I used a reverb on ascent. Um, functionally, it's equivalent, but it's interesting to see the different choice made there. I guess part of my preference for using Sends is because I'm used to working on a hardware mixer. So one thing that I've noticed they do that I don't really is they use the EQs as filters. One of the benefits of that is the EQ allows you to hear a specific band as you adjust the um, levels. So typically I would just make a filter and roll that back and that doesn't give me a good way of listening to the point at which the filter is set. So I think a very precise filter or um, frequency identification, using an EQ like that is probably a good idea. So that's something that I will take away with me. So... It's interesting that the rhythmic sound we have, I think, is that rhythmic LFO. So normally you would imagine that that was some notes placed or something, but it's, I don't think it is. So that's, that's definitely something I'd like to explore. It's also interesting to see the contrast between how little I was looking at the video through the process and was just relying on the few notes that I made and how much they've been referring to the video to make sure things align well. That so that's something cool, that maybe. partly reflects the intention that I had, but um, I think it shows a difference in thinking around this project, which is interesting. I like the amount of space that this has started to develop in time. It's interesting also to see that um, at this stage, only very small volume level adjustments are being made. I think there's a temptation to make big moves, but often when you get late in the mix, you're making half a dB, 1 dB, often no more than 3 at least, dB shifts. So um, 
Yeah, it's interesting to see that because often when I find myself doing that and the adjustments becoming small, mm -hmm. I know I'm getting towards uh, finishing up Second what I'm doing. Push. In my video, I made a breathing sound throughout. It's interesting that that little whoosh sound has a hint of a breathiness to it. So I like the parallel there. Obviously, we carried out these processes completely independently. So I'm always interested okay. to see then points test. where we did things Which differently just... or where we did things differently. Um, <laughs> where we did things impressive. similarly or differently, rather. So I think the compression could have worked, but the compression had the threshold way too low and the ratio way too high, so it was really squashing the mix and losing dynamics, which I guess I mentioned felt like they were lacking when the volumes changed. Also, the strong compression was gluing the elements together to give them a feel of a single sound, which often in a musical mix makes sense. But I think in this case, we want more disparate sounds, uh, more disjoint and separate elements. So the lack of compression, I think, allows the mix to open up. No compressor, no compressor. And I'm just, it's striking me now that these are all synthesized sounds. I think if I didn't know that they were synthesized, I would have assumed they were using samples, uh, field recordings and so forth. So I think that's a testament to their synthesis ability and the flexibility of synthesis to produce naturalistic sounds. Let's move on to the next one. Environment sound. I'm spying behind that, on but maybe the that should be, they have. That would be a good idea. Polymer, phase four, so most of those are built in sets, but also surge and um, also Zebra, Hive, some of the Yuhi plugins. I haven't really experimented with those, so that's another thing that I might take away from this process. So I see that they brought in the mix down of the audio rather than opening the project directly. So that's interesting that the Foley is a separate layer and they're going to be building the synth parts around that. So I also note that all of those tracks oh, were disabled, right. so they're not using any CPU time until you enable them. So that's another interesting little trick here. You have a template with a load of disabled synths that you can just bring online and they're ready to go. interesting that they went for quite long sustained chords, which I did too. When I was playing, um, I was playing the harmonic part in Pigments, I found I kept uh, having voice stealing when I had it in eight note polyphony, so I had to bump it up to 12 notes. So I think I tended, I tend towards playing fairly large chord voicings. But I think for this scene, 
I like the slightly more sparse harmony, I think. Maybe I was going a little overboard with that. Drift makes a lot of difference there, actually. It was feeling a little bit still, and I was wondering how they were going to add motion. That worked a lot. Bit so I One of the things search. that I've heard said quite a lot about this making all um, sounds to go with images is especially musical elements. Okay. Try and imagine that the musical elements were being played within the scene. So think Maybe about the constraints that are applied there. I like the thought that this relatively narrow harmonic part could be played by someone on a sort of synth guitar in the background. Uh, but I like the idea that we're keeping it relatively compact because even though the forest is large, the sort of clearing we're filming in is narrow. So reverb, I use. So I like the concept like here of just doubling the MIDI for this part and then Not making sure. something just rhythmic to go along with it. This one. I like the sort of um, like knocking transient that this has on it. It's a pretty interesting sound. I'll be interested to see how see how it works in the final mix. Let's have a look which part I could take. Welcome to the fourth episode of Two Artists and One Prompt. My name is Odo Sendai Dukai and this is a collaboration in... Very nice idea and this, this band passing, having it sort of compressed and then playing in the background, it reminds me of a radio broadcast and I think that's a really great atmospheric element that leans into the aesthetic of this video because I think the video is eerie, got a sort of maybe delayed creepy feeling going on. So I think field. this is this is a very clever uh, idea. Maybe completely in the stereo field. And I didn't pick this up in watching it, um, listening for the first time through, but um, I feel like this is the type of subtle textural element and subtle accents that is used by experienced sound designers to bring out the atmosphere. Oh. As shades the voice of emergency broadcast going on there. 
Maybe it's still too loud. I like the pitch sweep, I feel like it doesn't really cut the mix as it is, so I, I'd like to see where this sound design process goes. It reminds me of halfway between somebody bending a string on a guitar and, and a frog. And let's have a look. Yeah, so if we that have works. some stereo Oops, movement works and the then video as well. Delay. I've said to myself in the past a number of times that I would like to include more vocal elements, be they sort of sung, spoken word, or other non-word vocalizations. And I think this has only I mean, reinforced that desire. I think there's some really interesting, um, that's interesting good. opportunities. I like that. This is a problem that I found myself in that, um, you know, this video is going to be played on YouTube and you can't really tell what volume people are listening at. They don't if want you make to it use quiet and subtle without huge dynamics, then it can be lost when someone's listening. So you tend to have to crank the volume up a little bit it's to make it louder than you would like it to be. But if this were in a, in a cinema, someone watching a movie, then you could have this quiet because it would be in a controlled acoustic like listening environment. This balancing of, of this dynamic range versus loudness is a is a deep. difficult thing to to define. really appreciate the way that bass sound, which was intended as a sort of Foley atmospheric I'm sound, sure has become a bass element for a more musical piece. Um, I think that was a very interesting change of direction. I think very instructive for me. I enjoyed watching the whole process very much. I enjoyed the end result. I think there are definitely a few things which I learned there that I can take and I can use in my own uh, practices. For example, 
using Surge, another nice free um, synth, using notes within the project, um, entering some explicit values throughout, maybe using voices for textural or other elements, and um, various other things. So I'd like to say thank you very much to Odo Zendaidokai for his participation and his great work and efforts. And if you are interested at all in the type of work that we've been doing, then please go over to his channel, watch some videos, subscribe and enjoy. But from my perspective, I think this brings this um, project to a close. So I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me today and goodbye.